want you to rise if you're able. Arise, shine, your light has come. The light of Christ has come into the world, Emmanuel, God with us. We will follow the light. When it shines brightly in the night sky, when it glows dimly on the horizon, when it leads down comfortable paths to familiar places, when the road is unfamiliar and the destination unknown. We will in the light of Christ, we see that God is with us in this place, outside these doors, wherever we go, in life and in death. God is with us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. I invite you to be seated or to kneel as you are called. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world we so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to rise as you're able. Let us join our hearts and voices in our gathering song, Build My Life.
morning, St. Martin's. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, whether you are here in person or joining us from somewhere else online. Beloved, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. There is a lot happening this morning, a lot of announcements that we need to cover today. Uh, one thing first that we need to uh, make known, I mentioned last week that uh, our brother Andy Strom died in Christ. Uh, I have been in touch with Kristen and Pat. We are planning a memorial service this Saturday, uh, January 28th, here at St. Martin's, 2 o'clock. Uh, a reminder will be sent out to the congregation via email. I wanted to make sure to make that announcement. We have a uh, family promise coming up in uh, just a couple of weeks. Chris O'Sullivan has some words for us on family promise. Yes, I do. Chris. All right. Well, thank you. It's so exciting to be part of this church because we're active. We're living out our mission statement, which, if I recall, is, we used to be on our bullet. I didn't see it on today's, but uh, we serve God. We love all, and we uh, change lives. Uh, the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25, verse 35 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. For I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. So coming up, we're going to be hosting Family Promise, and we're going to be able to live out this verse here. Uh, that starts February 5th, which is a Sunday, through for the week, through the 11th. And it's going to be a little bit different this time. We're going to be responsible for transforming our church into a kitchen table to feed four families. So we'll need volunteers to prepare food for the evening, and we'll need some evening hosts to provide the hospitality. So again, we have sign-up sheets outside that you can, uh, hopefully you'll have a couple of families that will volunteer food each night. The food will need to be brought to the church at 545. The guest will arrive at six, but between six and seven, um, we'll, we'll feed them and uh, host them. So again, uh, Hopefully you will consider signing up and participating in this uh, ministry we do at St. Martin's in partnership with Family Promise. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Jerry Daniels has a few announcements for us as well. Jerry, the floor is yours. I'm not as quick as Chris. That's all right. <laughs> I have a few things uh, to let everyone know. Uh, we will not be holding a congregational meeting today. That has been postponed so that we can do the two weeks uh, prior to the budget being talked about and voted on, if you were at last uh, week's meeting to talk about the budget, you know that there are a lot of things going on. There are a lot of complications. We identified some things that we wanted to talk about more. It has changed a bit. You can pick one up out in the narthex. Please take it home with you. Look it over and come prepared with your comments uh, about anything that you see that you may be concerned about you or you don't think is, is uh, taken care of. So you will get the announcement will go out, should go out tomorrow. We will have a budget meeting the next Sunday, next Sunday, and we will have the congregational meeting on the 5th of February? 5th of February. So uh, be prepared for those things. One of the things I want to make for anyone looking for their giving statement. Again, we've got a lot of things changing. That will be ready mid-February. Not the last day in January, the middle of February, but you will have those. It's just taken a lot of time to get everything processed. And on a much lighter note, any of you who uh, qualify for an AARP card, the Fort Bend Career Technology Center is finally able to get, was finally able to get enough culinary arts students back from COVID to where they can start running their restaurant. They need people to serve to. So they have invited all senior citizens to come and take part in that soft opening. And I'm sure they want 150 people, so you might put a little flower in your hair and go on in there. They probably won't turn you away. But uh, I've sent that to a couple of people. I will make that. Uh, I will see if I can get uh, Mary to, uh, or someone to send that out to you. 
so that you will have access to that. Uh, I'm a big supporter of Fort Bend Career and Technology, and I want those kids to have uh, a tremendous crowd to serve to so that when they do get out, they can go out and make really good uh, restaurant tours. If y'all have any questions on that, get in contact with me and I will give you all the information I have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jerry. So do be uh, watching for that announcement to come out regarding our meetings. We're just extending the fund to more meetings because I know that's what you wanted. Uh, Kelsey has uh, an exciting announcement about an initiative we're taking on. Hello, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the Super Bowl is just a few weeks away, and um, my daughter thinks the Dallas Cowboys are going to win. I don't know about you. She's a true Texan, I guess. But we're going to partake with several other churches in our area in a program called Super Bowl of Caring. And what that is, is that um, between now and Super Bowl Sunday, you can bring non-perishable items to the church and we're gonna have a big box and we're going to collect them. And those are going to go to feed families in Fort Bend County. And then on Super Bowl Sunday, we will have two baskets, one for one team and one for the other team. And we're going to collect financial donations to give to Family Promise. Um, the team who wins, I will be one team, Pastor will be the other team. The team who wins, the other person gets to uh, pie the other in the face, I think is what we determined, uh, with the help of some of our youth. Um, so if that's something that you would like to see happen, uh, please vote for me. Um, <laughs> Please vote for me. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna, and all the money that we collect will go to Family Promise to help them. This is an initiative that several ELCA churches are doing and several other churches in the area. And so we thought we would jump in on the fund. And uh, it's something that we can do, again, like Chris was talking, to live out, out our uh, mission statement here at uh, St. Martin's. So there you go. Thank you, Kelsey. Personally, I'm still lobbying for the Georgia Bulldogs to be in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> they can do it, too. Uh, finally, this morning, we have the joy of welcoming some new members, and so after the sermon this morning, we'll be inviting you forward and affirming your uh, membership in this community. Those who are joining, we have enjoyed you for quite some time already. Now it's time to make it official, so we give thanks to God for the opportunity to do that this morning. And so I invite you to rise as you're able as we continue our worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on
pray. Loving God, your, your son, son Jesus taught many things that help people, people know how deeply you love humanity. Help, help us to live in your love so that we might be beacons of light for others. We, we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I invite you to be seated. I invite our children forward for the children's message. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. There's lots of friends this morning. So ever told you that you have an attitude? <laughs> I saw some of you shake your head. Addie, did you shake your head yes? Yeah? Good, because you have one sometimes. An attitude is sometimes when we have when we have what our parents might think of as bad behavior or when we're sassy or when we think we know things that we don't. And today, Pastor is going to talk about these things called the B attitude. And they're in this fancy sermon that Jesus gives on the Sermon on the Mount. And this sermon takes up many, many chapters in the book of Matthew. And Jesus tells us how to live our lives. But in the Beatitudes, he takes things that people thought were sure things. People thought were ways that they should be. People thought were things and ways that they should act. And he flips them upside down and says, oh no, friend, you need to do it my way. And sometimes when we have attitudes, doing things Jesus' way is hard. It's very hard. And the adults can tell you that too. Sometimes doing things Jesus' way is not always fun. And sometimes we can get in trouble when we don't do things the way that God wants us to do. But the B attitudes help us to refocus on what Jesus calls us to be and who Jesus wants us to be. And he tells us later on, he talks about how we're supposed to be salt and light, and these are two very, very, very different things. We don't usually hear about salt and light and thinking about that's how we're supposed to be. But Pastor Will's gonna tell the grown-ups what that means. So let's pray. Dear God, Dear God help us with our attitude. Help us to be more like you. Help us to listen to you. Help us to listen to you. And to follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, come on. <coughs> A reading from Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. The congregation reads the bolded verses. Happy are those who, who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or stay in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees, planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. <laughs> When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I invite you to be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ, I spent a summer during seminary as a chaplain intern at Messiah Lutheran Church in Minneapolis. It was only 10 weeks long, but clinical pastoral education was an incredibly formative experience for me. Messiah shared a building with Lutheran Social Services. We were directly across the street from a local methadone clinic. And there were a few homeless shelters in the area. So there were lots of opportunities to meet people from all walks of life and all experiences. One of the people I remember most fondly was Maxine. She lived in the neighborhood and was a regular presence at Sunday morning jazz worship. And if you spent any time whatsoever with Maxine, it wouldn't take you long to hear three little words that formed the core of her belief. It's a blessing. Every Sunday as the congregation shared their prayers and praises, Maxine would echo a response to each one. It's a blessing. Promotion at work? It's a blessing. Grandchild came home to visit? It's a blessing. Recovery from an illness? It's a blessing. But there were times the words didn't seem to fit the situation. I remember one day we had worked hard to get ready for a summer block party, but the day of it rained terribly. We couldn't go outside like we planned, but Maxine reminded us it's a blessing. The community garden needed the rain. And we could still do most of the things we planned on. It would just be more intimate inside the building. Then there was one Sunday that a beloved member of the church shared that their cancer had returned and the prognosis was not good. There was a palpable gloom in the room. But from the back left, I heard three words, softer and sadder than usual. It's a blessing. Frankly, folks, I was appalled. How could anyone mistake that news for blessing? I was distracted the rest of the service, struggling with the offense of those words in relation to that situation. And so when the worship ended, I caught up to Maxine as she sipped her coffee, and I asked her to explain how she could say that this terrible thing was a blessing. She said it's terrible that she's suffering, but God is with her. 
If God brings a miracle and cures her, it's a blessing. And if Jesus takes her home to him, well, that's a blessing too. Dear church, I don't mind telling you I learned something that day about blessings. You see, at the start of those 10 weeks, I thought Maxine's little mantra was quaint or cute. Maybe just a way of putting an optimistic spin on everything. By the time I left Messiah, I had come to understand the power of those three words. Because for Maxine, the repetition over and over and over again of that phrase served as a powerful reminder that God is present. If the situation was good, then we could see how God had acted. If the situation was bad, then we had the opportunity to see what God would bring out of it. Maxine powerfully understood that the blessing was not the situation itself, nor the outcome. The blessing was the promise that God is present. And if we could remember that, if we could remind ourselves to cling to that promise, we would see God act in amazing ways. I always think of Maxine when I read this passage before us today. Maybe it's the Beatitudes that influenced her way of thinking. Here in Matthew 5, Jesus speaks of blessing, and those he calls blessed are not necessarily who we would expect. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted. Blessed are the mourning and the meek and the merciful. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Neither in Jesus' day nor in our own is this the list most people would associate with blessing. We have a tendency to associate blessing with prosperity, to tie God's favor to tangible manifestations of wealth, power, and status. There is a whole prosperity gospel that centers around living your best life now by finding ways to manipulate God into giving you what you want, like some kind of cosmic genie. But Jesus says, blessed are the unlikely and the unlucky. Jesus calls blessed the very people who most of the world thinks of as just the opposite. Because if we associate blessing with money and power and status, then the lack of those things would seem to suggest a lack of blessing. We even see that assumption in Scripture. Job's friends spend the majority of the book trying to get him to fess up to whatever terrible thing he must have done that made God angry enough to take away all his stuff. They cannot conceive of a scenario where all Job's misfortune isn't directly linked to his actions and attitudes in some way. How much have our attitudes changed? How often do we stop to ask the person holding the cardboard sign to tell us their story? What are the assumptions we make about people whose lives look different from ours? What are the odds we'd be willing to spend time with and call blessed the day laborer, the sex worker, the drug addict, the homeless? But that is exactly who Jesus calls blessed. Not a Times Person of the Year or Forbes 30 Under 30 in sight. The people who were drawn to Jesus were the sick and the poor, the outcast and the overlooked, the desperate and the demon-possessed. The Sermon on the Mount is not a theological treatise given in a nice building to folks wearing their Sunday best. Jesus is looking into the eyes of the poor in spirit and telling them it's a blessing because the kingdom of heaven is yours. Jesus is looking into the eyes of those who mourn and saying it's a blessing because I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is looking into the eyes of the meek and saying, it's a blessing because you are children of the king. Jesus is looking into the eyes of the hurting and the hopeless, the sick and the sinner, and saying, you are so blessed. 
because you are so radically loved and desired and chosen by God. Jesus gathers a crowd of people whose lives do not seem to bear the characteristic marks of blessing and says, y'all just wait and see what God is going to do in and with and through you. It's a blessing. He goes on to call these people salt and light. In a world without refrigeration, salt was desperately important as a preservative. Salt made it possible to store and transport meat. Everyone from king to commoner, no matter one's station in life, needed salt. Just so with light. In a world where you couldn't flip a switch and turn on the lights, little could be done in the dark. One had to work while the sun was up or else have lamps and candles to give them light in the dark. Everyone needed light. And Jesus tells this crowd, full of nobody specials, that not only are they blessed, they are needed. They are important. They have a purpose. Not once they get their lives together. Not when and if God changes your fortunes. Here and now, as you are, you are important to God and to the world. You are salt, the stuff that preserves and keeps from spoil. The stuff that improves the taste and makes things interesting. The stuff the body needs to survive. You matter. Right here and now, you are light just as you are, helping people not to stumble, showing the way when the path is obscured, driving away the fear of the unknown and the unseen. Nothing has to change in your life for you to be loved and worthy and wanted. You are blessed. and You are a blessing. Dear church, do you believe that? Because if we do, it should affect the way we live, the way we treat others, the way we treat ourselves. You are blessed, not because of what you have, but because of who has you. On the days when things are going well, it's an opportunity to thank God for all the ways you've seen God at work in your life. On the days when things are hard, it's an opportunity to trust God to be faithful and to look for what new thing God may be bringing forth in you. When we cultivate that understanding of blessing, an understanding that to be blessed is not about our situation, but our Savior, then we get to be a blessing to others. When we help others know that they too are blessed, we become salt to preserve them and light to guide them. There's a catch, beloved. Because salt that is not used is wasted. A lamp kept under the basket gives light to no one. We must share the good news that we have found because it can't be news if nobody hears it. The nature of blessing is that of a gift. When we keep it to ourselves, it ceases to be what it was. Blessing is meant to be shared. And there are so many people in need of blessing. We see them every day. The poor in spirit and the poor in money. Those hungry for righteousness and those hungry for food. The ones mourning loss and the ones mourning for what they cannot seem to find. The persecuted and the oppressed. The ones everyone looks at with disgust and the ones nobody wants to look at at all. Has anyone told them that they are radically, ridiculously loved? Have we shown them? <laughs> Has anyone told them that they are worthy and wanted, that the world would not be the same without them? Have we proved it to them? Do they know how blessed are. Do we? 
Are we willing to tell them? Dear church, it's good for us to be here. We need to come to this place to be reminded over and over again that we are blessed, that we are loved and worthy and wanted and important. But if those words are only ever spoken in this place, shown by actions in this room, then they cease to be a blessing when they cross that threshold. There is a world in need of blessing, and God has called you to be the ones to share it. And it's a blessing. That call will lead you to unfamiliar places and make you have uncomfortable conversations. And it's a blessing. You will meet people who change the way you look at the world, and your words and actions may change the way they look at themselves. And it's a blessing. <clears throat> If we're able to understand that, to cling to that promise and orient our lives around it, beloved, we will see God work in powerful ways. And it's a blessing. So wherever you are in your walk today, church, I pray that you can see that it's a blessing. It's a blessing because the one whose hands formed the earth holds your hurts and your hopes close to their heart. It's a blessing because there's nothing that you can do or that can be done to you that can change God's radical, reckless love for you. It's a blessing because you have seen God show up before and you trust that God will do it again. So I pray that as we go out those doors, you might take the blessing with you and share it with others. May you be willing to go to those uncomfortable places and sit with those whose lives don't bear the marks of money, power, and status. <clears throat> May you meet them where they are and show them dignity and love, expecting nothing in return. As you do, perhaps you will both get a chance to see God at work. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you, folks, that's a blessing. Amen. Invite you to rise as you're able. Let us join our hearts and voices in our hymn of the day in 651. Oh, praise the gracious power.
invite you to be seated. <coughs> and I would invite our new members to come forward. We give thanks for the gift of baptism and these folks who are joining us, one with us in the body of Christ. So we welcome them as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. Cynthia, Tom, Karen, Grant, welcome. I would ask that we all confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And friends, you don't have to guess. <laughs> Look this well. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. In baptism we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And so I ask you, sisters and brothers in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place, if so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, I do. and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, mm -hmm. do you promise to support and pray for these members in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Splendid. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in this life of Christ of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. So it is my joy officially to welcome you, Cynthia, Thank you. Tom, Karen, and Grant. I encourage you all to take a moment after the service and get to know them. They're wonderful people, wonderful children of God, and we are glad to have you among us. I'll allow you to go back to your seats now. We'll embarrass you more later. <laughs> We will continue our worship with the prayers. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call us to speak your blessing to the world. Help us to work together across differences. Energize ecumenical partnerships, including the World Council of Churches and Lutheran World Federation. God of grace, receive our honor, receive our prayer. You bless the earth and called us to tend it. Fill the land and sea with your abundance. Bless harvests in the southern hemisphere and fallow fields in the northern hemisphere. Equip farmers to till and keep the earth sustainably. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You spoke your blessing on the peacemakers. Break the might of the oppressor in every nation. Dispel the shadow of death in places of war and persecution. Grant us leaders to lift the yokes that burden those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You spoke your blessing on the poor in spirit. Rouse communities to care for neighbors who need shelter, are facing maltreatment, or are isolated and lonely especially all those whose names are on our prayer list and all those we name before you now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. <coughs> Merciful God, you spoke your blessing on all who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Sustain the ministries of this congregation and all churches in this community. Nurture each congregation's unique witness to your presence. 
foster mutual respect, inspire our cooperation in loving our neighbors. Merciful God, you see our prayer. You spoke your blessing on all who mourn. We praise you for the faithful who have gone ahead of us, both famous and unknown. Help us to trust in the promise of the resurrection and bring us with them to the fullness of eternal life. Merciful God, you save our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. <laughs> the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Beloved, if you are worshiping alone from home, we invite you to have bread and wine or crackers and juice with you so that you also may participate in this feast of grace. If you are worshiping here, we do have individual prepackaged communion packets available if you would prefer that, or you are welcome to the bread and the wine, the gluten free wafers, and the juice. All are welcome at this table, beloved. I invite you to rise as you're able. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And in all places, give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Beloved, no matter who you are, what you've done, or what has been done to you, there is grace for that. And God denies that grace to no one. Come to the table. For all is ready. We invite you to be seated.
anoint this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to rise as you're able for the benediction. Now God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices in our ascending song, The Blessing.
Christ be God. Amen. Right where? 